Hi there, my name is Shanley, and I'll be going over our paper, Social Media's Role During Identity Changes Related to Major Life Events. And I would like to give a quick shout out to the co-authors, Ben Zhang and Oliver Hampson. So to start off, what is this abstract yet complicated word, identity? Well, there are many aspects to it. There are different kinds of identities like social person and role identities. It's also how we can differentiate ourselves from or identify ourselves with others. And scholars in sociology and psychology have also found how we can have more than one identity. And oftentimes we place them into a hierarchical system or structure where some are more important or salient than others. So what happens to identity when major life events occur and what role does social media play in those experiences? With that, we focused on two research questions. One, how do people perceive their identity to change from major life events? And two, how do people use social media during those identity changes to facilitate their experiences? From conducting 28 semi-structured interviews, we found that there are a variety of ways people perceive their identity to change from major life events, which we found to be through mental processes, identity roles, identity fulfillment, and identity maintenance. These identity changes impacted how people behaved, got involved, and interacted with others in online communities. So our work builds on the growing body of research regarding identity based online communities, how people navigate those online communities and find similar others, as well as the uses and impacts of the various social media affordances. So we had a variety of findings for both our research questions. First, from exploring how people perceive their identity to change, we found that people had mental processes, which we use as a way to encompass a variety of terms, including self-concept, mindset, and attitude. This is how we describe when an individual views their own self or the world around them. So here we have an example of a change in mindset or outlook. So participant two experienced moving and becoming what she had called a creative. She mentioned how she changed how she thought about her own work, which was a big mental identity shift for her. Next, we have identity roles. These are labels that we assign and give ourselves based on the roles that we occupy in different social structures or social groups that we're part of. So for example, participant four who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis said that their identity changed when they became a multiple sclerosis patient, while participant eight said that becoming a mother was a new identity role that she took on after her life event of giving birth. Next is identity fulfillment. So there's not much literature we found out there regarding identity fulfillment. So we define it as the gradual attainment of an identity over a period of time. Participant 16 who graduated from college said that she felt like graduating was an event that made up her identity over the course of four years rather than just a milestone of graduating. Last but not least, we found that a few participants actually felt like the life events they experienced didn't have a change um, or an impact on their identity at all. And instead, those life events maintained their identity. Participant 24, who had come out as gay and changed their religious beliefs, said that he is still the same person as he was before. Even though some things changed, like being open about his sexuality or no longer being Protestant or no longer being a husband, those weren't salient to him. What was salient was being a father and a teacher, and he felt like, therefore, he was still the same person as he was before. Now, how do people use social media during these identity change experiences? The first way we identified was the use of online impression ma and management, or also known as self-presentation. Um, this is a process of controlling how someone is perceived by others online. So here, participant 15, who had gotten married, described how she decided not to share the marriage online because she wanted to be careful and consider how it may impact people who saw the content, like people who don't like weddings or had gotten a divorce. And participant 10, who started a new job, said that they felt like the need to present themselves a certain way online because you never know who may be looking. Next, um, people also use identity based on like communities during their identity change experiences. Um, this is where people went to look for and connect with similar others online. 
participant four who moved to Boston was looking for a queer community and felt comforted to see that there were huge groups of people online that they could connect with. And participant 27 was part of multiple Facebook groups for her health conditions that she was experiencing, which was helpful for her to get support. And next is a domino effect, which is a term that we use to describe how new connections, such as such as those that are made in those identity-based online communities, um, can lead to even more connections. So there's this cumulative effect like dominoes. Participant four, for example, who moved and started college, was looking into different online groups and would meet people in those online groups that would then direct participant four to specific individuals or other groups that they can be a part of. Um, and they define this as like a big spider web. Last but not least is social media affordances. So there are a lot of social media affordances out there. We particularly focused on editability, visibility control, and spreadability. And what social media affordances are, are features of a technology, or in this case, social media platforms that give the actor or the user the ability to do a particular action. Participant seven, who socially transitioned as a transgender man um, by describing their experience on Tumblr, um, explored and constantly edited their name until they found one that they felt most comfortable. So to recap, the main takeaways from our paper include demonstrating the different ways in which people perceive their identity change from major life events. We also describe how such changes can impact people's online community behavior and involvement. And our findings build on research regarding identity-based online communities and they, how they're used and can be impactful, um, as well as a deeper understanding of the uses and impacts of social media affordances for identity changes from major life events. Thank you.